Coming up on No Pull, is it time for Big Bad Bama to worry? Whoa. The Tide eat down just a four-point win at home over Texas A&M over the weekend. What does this mean for Saban and company? And the Bruins out west are biting. Don't look now, but UCLA is 6-0 and and bowl eligible. But are they for real? And it's week six, so you know what that means. It's time to consult the panic meter. We'll tell you which programs need to sound the alarm. All that and more, it's No Pull, and it starts right now. Oh, spikes. Sonny DeShera. Who? From Auburn. The, the freshman ever won. The freshman ever won championships. Chairman, you are an absolute square. Cleveland, the catch. Good if it does. Oh, he hit it. He hit it. Wow, it's no. getting serious. Frankly, I'm pretty embarrassed. Bang. 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 Welcome on in to another edition of No Pulp. We are officially in the month of October, which means, hey, we start to find out which programs mean business and which ones are headed for the exits as far as bowl season is concerned. The man to my left, he's Calvin Christoforo. He certainly means business. I'm Johnny Gadamowitz. So glad you could join us. Let's kick it off with this week's headlines. And Calvin, there were certainly plenty of them, but perhaps none bigger than Texas just steamrolling Oklahoma 49 to zip. Some are calling this the Red River route. Me personally, I prefer the Red River romp. But Calvin, what did we learn about this Texas team with Quinn Ewers now back in the fall? Well, let me give you the lowdown on the Red River showdown. Quinn Ewers is the guy, and boy, did Texas miss him. 49 zip. Ewers, four touchdowns, nearly 300 yards of offense. This guy was slinging it all over the place. Such a big addition back into that Texas lineup. I'll tell you this, Johnny, no one's waking up shaking in their boots when they got Hudson Card going against them. They do, though, with Quinn Ewers. Well, what stood out to me was, you think about a 49-point explosion for Texas, only two wide receivers got in on the stat sheet. The rest of it was running backs and tight ends, and Ewers himself, 289 yards, four touchdowns, one interception on the day. Steve Sarkeesian said the ball sort of slipped out of his hand when he tried to throw it away, so cut him some slack there. A whole lot of naysayers worried about Ewers not getting that tune-up game before Oklahoma. He proved his doubters wrong, but speaking of Oklahoma, let's look at that flip side because 49 points allowed defensively and the offense puts up a goose egg. How much should Sooner fans really be concerned with Brent Venables leading the charge? I am very concerned about Oklahoma. 145 points this team has allowed in three straight losses. This is a Sooners club. Granted, no Dylan Gabriel. So the starting quarterback without, he had a concussion. Looks like he might be back this week against Kansas. But I am very worried, not only this year for Oklahoma going down the stretch, because you know where the Sooners are going, right? They're going to the SEC, and this is not going to fly in the SEC when you get punched in the face by a farm-raised kid from Alabama. Look, the Sooners are in trouble. Not this this year, but years going forward. Yeah, I see two big issues. The quarterback play, which you alluded to. Also, the defense, though. I mean, this is a Sooners team that through the first three games, 13 sacks, 32 tackles for loss. Their last three, one sack and 12 tackles for loss. The defense has really fallen off a cliff, so much so to a point where opponents averaging 48 points per game during this three-game losing streak. Yeah, not good. A blowout in the Red River showdown, but Alabama was caught in another tight one on Saturday. Without starting, starting quarterback Bryce Young, the Tide escaped a test from now the 3-3 three and three Texas A&M Aggies, 24-20. Johnny, Bama looked a little worse for wear without QB1. How far can they go without their Heisman Trophy winner. Well, they better hope that Mr. Bryce Young is good to go for this upcoming weekend against Tennessee. We'll touch on that more later, but you watch this game and that whole Alabama offense just didn't have that same rhythm, didn't have that same flow that we have all come to know and really expect from Nick Saban and company. Relied more on that running game, over 150 yards on the ground for Jameer Gibbs. But the offense will be unable to keep pace with Tennessee this weekend if they do not get Bryce Young back. Balls number one in yards per game, number two in points per game nationally. They need their Heisman winner back in a hurry. Well, Jameer Gibbs is one of the best running backs in the country, but Jameel Milrow, their quarterback, didn't look great. All of his touchdowns were underneath passes at the right receiver. Three turnovers, for too, long if yards. Two fumbles lost in the reception, yeah. just 111 yards through the air. Bryce Young is going to need to be back. And just to tell you how much Alabama misses them, game on the line. Alabama, a third and three. They run it. 
You think if Bryce Young's in the game, they no run shit. that ball? No. In that game, Not Texas a and a chance. And the Aggies went all the way down the field, unable, though, to get into the end zone. Now Texas A&M, 3-3. Three and three. Is there any way Jimbo Fisher's on the hot seat? I think those hot seat conversations really started to emerge when this A&M team lost to App State. You think back to a few weeks ago, and since that really tough loss, they're only 2-2. Two and two. So Jimbo hasn't done himself any favors. I'll give him a little bit of credit, though. Those two wins over ranked Miami and Arkansas team. So... We'll give him some respect in that regard, but you know how this coaching carousel goes. Every loss, the hot seat conversation gets further. I don't think even Jimbo Fisher is innocent from that. Well, former Texas A&M legend Johnny Manziel didn't like the play call on that final play where A&M looked to go into the end zone and win at Bama. But to think that Jimbo Fisher's on the hot seat, I think is a little bit of a stretch. This guy brought in the best recruiting class in the country, and now you want to out him? I don't think he's on the hot seat even with A&M's 3-3 three three star. Towing a fine line. Regardless, let's go out west where UCLA put up 28 points in the second half to take down Utah in a battle of ranked Pac-12 teams. Bruins! It's now six games and six wins for those Bruins who have taken down the likes of Utah, of course. Washington, Colorado to name a few. Big test this weekend, though, against Oregon. Calvin, just how legit is this 6-0 start? I'm all in on UCLA. All right. Look, Chip Kelly knows how to win in the Pac-12, but I think this game this weekend is going to tell a lot. Look, the two UCLA upset wins, Washington, Utah, both at the Rose Bowl. Going on the road to Eugene, an Oregon team that had that bad loss on national TV against Georgia to begin the year. They've won five straight, and Bo Nix is playing with a ton of confidence. This game, this weekend, can really make or break the Bruins season. Boy, you've got a quarterback in Dorian Thompson-Robinson who has slowly but surely elevated himself into the Heisman Watch conversation. Absolutely. Four touchdowns Saturday, set the program's new career record. And look, their running game is pretty legit, too. They've gone over 200 yards on the ground four times, including against the Utes this past weekend. But let's hit on those Utes. Calvin, what went wrong? I'll tell you what went wrong. The AP voters went wrong, ranking Utah to start the season. Everyone bought in. Oh, Utah almost didn't beat, almost beat Ohio State in the Rose Bowl. Let's rank them. And now they have two losses, and they're still ranked? Come on! I know people love the Utes, but this team is not that good. Yeah, I'm on the same page. It's hard for me to disagree with that. I mean, look, you give up 511 total yards of offense to UCLA, and that's not going to bode too well for whoever the heck is voting on putting a number in front of your name. UCLA and Utah, an intriguing matchup, but I got a feeling our next segment is going to be way more must-watch television. Joe Puccio enters the juicer. He and Calvin go toe-to-toe -to -toe when we come back on No Ball. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you got to make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Bird and Magic, Ali and Frazier, <laughs> Tiger and Phil. Now, Cristoforo and Puccio. It's time for the juicer. And with that, we welcome in good friend of the show, Joe Puccio Pooch. 
It's Calvin's Fall 2022 Juicer debut. What would it mean to you as a competitor to come in here today, pull off the upset? I think I'd raise a banner. I think that's how important yep. this sounds would like be. a moral I mean, victory waiting to happen. I went to shake your hand, but I you're, not a, you're not a ball player. So I noticed. I guess we'll just we'll settle this in here. All right. Well, without further ado, let's hop right in. Across college football, we've seen a fair share of injuries on various teams. Which injury is impacting his team the most so far through these first few weeks. I want to let the guest get the best here. Why don't you go ahead first, Joe? All right, well, I'll talk about Bryce Young, the starting quarterback for mm. Alabama. You guys talked about it at the start of the show. Alabama is in trouble if they don't have their Heisman quarterback, their number one overall pick in the draft this upcoming year, playing. He's the starting quarterback had 111 yards, Jalen Milrow. That's the lowest number that an Alabama quarterback has had since the Iron Bowl in 2017. All that beef between Nick Saban and Jimbo Fisher, it's kind of like the beef Calvin and I have right now. Nick Saban's team goes out there and only beats Texas A&M by four. The Tide need Bryce Young. I mean, they need Bryce Young out on the football field. Riddle me this, Joseph. Can I call you Joseph? Sure. Alabama's what? What's their record? They're pretty good. They're five and zero. Oh. Mm -hmm. If they had Bryce Young, would they be five and zero? Oh? They, they. The injury hasn't impacted them. They are five and zero oh in the number one team in the land. I'll tell you who it did impact. Texas Quinn Ewers. This oh. is the guy who oh. had Bama on the ropes at home. If he doesn't get hurt, who knows what would have happened? Oh, it's a shame. That but look, that's not it. They lost to Texas Tech in overtime it's with Hudson Card at the helm. Ewers wins that game. I said it in A block. Hudson Card does not shake anybody's boots. Quinn Ewers is a guy who can go out and make plays that guys like Hudson Card can't. They have two losses because Ewers went down. Bama win, 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 win. Six. Regardless of who they right. touchdowns, one or You both Bryce make a convincing argument. I think if Bryce Young plays. Bama wins that game by 30 this They won the weekend, game! And they're the number one team in the country. Right, guys, so takes exactly round one. what happened. All right, let's move on to yeah. round two now. We mentioned earlier the coaching carousels. Plenty of guys on the move. What has been the coaching firing so far that has led to the most immediate success for a program? I'm looking at Paul Christ in Wisconsin. Look, the Badgers, they had a good start when Paul Christ was there, but then a 2-3 and three record to start the year, and then they go with a new head coach. But now in the first game without Chris, Graham Mertz throws for a season high 299 yards. And you look at Wisconsin's schedule coming up, you got MSU, or you can sleep for that game, Purdue, same thing, and Maryland. I didn't know Maryland was good at football. They have some of the worst scoring defenses in all the land. You just got to be on the lookout for Wisconsin. They may jump around in the Big Ten because Graham Mertz is a good quarterback. The head coach, Paul Chris, is not. Yeah, they played a really, really good Northwestern team. Yeah. So I'll give you that. Look, yeah. Graham Mertz threw it around mm -hmm. against Northwestern. Not many guys can Highest say Highest scoring offense of the game. I'll tell season, you who did make an impact. You like jazz? I, I love jazz. You know it's who awesome. else likes jazz? DJ Jazzy Jeff, the head coach at Georgia Tech. But since he's gone, Georgia the Tech. Yellow Jackets Tech? are buzzing. I'll tell you what they had that Georgia Wisconsin Tech. doesn't have. A ranked Tech. win on the road against Pittsburgh 26-21. Oh, wow. Then a win against the Blue Devils of Duke, a team that started the season 4-0. They got Virginia and Virginia Tech on this schedule. They might do a 180 and make a bowl game now that DJ Jazzy Jeff out of town. I'd be scared if they were playing basketball because there's no way Georgia Tech is is this bad. Right Two now. very compelling cases, but I'm gonna lean Mr. Cristoforo <sighs> here. I Thank think you. those the wins over Pitt, big time for Georgia Tech, trying to establish themselves in the ACC. But let's move on now to teams that have numbers in front of their names. A bevy of matchups this weekend where we've got ranked squads going up against unranked squads. Calvin, we'll go to you first this time. Who's a team that's on upset watch? Kansas is what? upset watch. The Jayhawks, I think, might have won their last game of the season. They were 5-0 and to start the year. Everyone blaring the trumpets like Edwin Diaz is coming <laughs> into the game. Kansas, post-game day, they lose to TCU. Now they face Oklahoma, and the Sooners have a ton of question marks. But Dylan Gabriel coming back off a concussion is going to start this game potentially, and they are just so much more talented than Kansas at every single position. Games down in Norman, I think the Sooners get it done against the Jayhawks. How can we even prove that? Oklahoma's not even that good of a team. They lost 49-0 to Texas. Talent wins. The game that you need to watch, 
Illinois against Minnesota. The Golden Gophers are going to take sleep down. through or watch? Uh, you were, you're going to want to watch that I game. I wouldn't, watch, I wouldn't watch Oklahoma on my television. I'll tell you that for free. What's Illinois' best win of the season? I, I guess it would be the uh, Indiana game. Oh, wait, no, they lost to the Hoosiers. They're not that good. A 9-6 win over Iowa? I mean, come on now. Are we really talking about this Illinois team? Iowa couldn't score if Thornton Academy was on the other side. Let's be honest here. Illinois has a strong defense. I'll give the Illini that. But right behind them in scoring defense, Minnesota. These two teams are very good defensively, but the Golden Gophers are the third best offense in the Big Ten. This game won't even be close. Grab your pillow for that one. All right, Calvin is storming from behind to take a 2-1 huh. to one lead. I'm on the same page where I think Oklahoma, talent-wise, athleticism-wise, just brings more to the table Rock. than Kansas does. Time for question number four. Here we go. Last one. Which Power Five conference is like most likely to not have a team in the college football playoff this year? Well, both of us have glasses, so we're school smart. You know who else is school smart? The Pac-12. The Pac-12 will not have a team in the college football really? playoff. USC and UCLA are good, and it's not necessarily knocking the two teams from L.A. I hear they have great fan bases down there. But college football is in the South and the Midwest. Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Clemson, we all know that's probably going to be the college football playoff field. But behind them, you have Michigan, Tennessee, and Ole Miss. You can't tell me that beating up on Colorado, Arizona, and the Sacramento City School District is good enough for USC and UCLA to get into the college football playoff. There's just no, no team from the Pac-12 is going to get in. USC will be a college football playoff team. Not Johnny, over, I said it Clemson. weeks ago that USC will be going to the college over football home. playoff I don't think they're going to put Georgia, Alabama, two teams from the SEC, and two teams from the Big Ten in. I think USC gets in. The Big 12 doesn't get a team in. They have two undefeated teams, Oklahoma State and TCU. And guess what? They play each other this week. The big dogs of the Big 12 are already out. Texas has two losses. Oklahoma has three losses. I don't think the Big 12 gets a team in the CFP. Saying the Big 12 is a power conference is like saying Calvin's good at basketball. All right. It's not true. Here we are, four questions in, we're tied at two apiece, which means it is time for the tiebreaker, gentlemen. It's officially fall time. We're in October. I love Every, the Mets. I love the Mets. Everyone loves love to Mets. get the Mets are so good. October. <laughs> when you <laughs> sit down for a nice October meal, right, is, okay. the, is the dessert pumpkin pie or apple pie? Pumpkin pie, easily. Apple pie, 100% every time. What's my, what would I have? Well, pumpkin, pumpkin pie apple. is orange, so the Mets, so I'm going to go pumpkin pie. Apple pie is better. Pooch, so. I hate to tell you, my friend, I'm an apple pie guy. Calvin Cristoforo is your juicer winner. Hey, this was fun, gentlemen. This was fun. No, we'll okay. do it again sometime, Pooch. I'll pass. I'm sorry okay. for the loss. Hey, when we come back, sound the alarm. It's time for the panic meter. Calvin and I will tell you which squad should be big time worried. All that and more when No Pulp returns. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, yes. you, your football buddy, your football buddy, you, your plumber, breathe right into your foot, your plumber's masseuse, yes. you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. No pulp. That's Johnny Gadamwitz. I'm Calvin Cristoforo. And now it's time for your favorite part of the show. Our faces 
in random places. Who doesn't places. love to see our faces? I know. I think a lot of people love to see them. Okay, it's Panic Meter, and I'm going to give you a team, Johnny, and you're going to tell me how you how panicked you are about this squad. I like and it. When you do, your beautiful face is going to show up on this screen. First question, how concerned are you with the Alabama Crimson Tide? I'm not very concerned. I'm going to say my panic meter is at a level one, but I want to put it with a oh, little bit you. of an asterisk. Okay. We talked about it earlier. If Bryce Young doesn't come back this week, this team is in trouble. I'm not the biggest believer in Tennessee, but I think Tennessee can do enough to knock off the Tide if their Heisman winner is not on the field. All of a sudden, that could completely shift the narrative as far as college football playoff, who gets out of the SEC talk is concerned. At the end of the day, not a major issue. I do expect Bryce Young to play. I think I'm a little bit more confident in the Crimson Tide. I'm actually on the other side of you. I'm at a zero, and I got a helmet on because I'm going to deflect anything you throw back at me. Back in your playing yeah, days here. That's probably after a home run. I hit 11 of them in one game one time. But really? That's besides the point. Alabama, like to me, us. I have no concern about Bryce Young is coming back. Even if they don't have him in Knoxville, I think they get it done. I think this is a national championship contender for sure. Uh, all right. Well, fair enough. Neither of us too worried about the Crimson Tide, and for good reason, after all. They are Alabama football. Let's shift gears, though, and go back to a team that we touched on a little bit earlier, Oklahoma. Where are you on the Sooners? I'm very concerned about the Oklahoma Sooners. I think I'm like at the 90 percentile. You got good reason to be. concern. Yeah, look at me over here. 0-3 in the Big 12 to start the season. 3-3 three and three overall. They're not playing with any confidence. They just got rolled by their rival. But here's the thing why I'm not a 10 of a 9. Dylan Gabriel is coming back. And I think they have a good matchup against Kansas this week. What I am concerned is, is the future. Moving to the SEC, I'm worried about that. You talk about a fall from grace. I mean, at one point, this was the number six team in the country, 3-0, and sitting pretty not too far away from a college football playoff run. I don't see how you couldn't be at a 10. Put wow. me on the far end of that panic meter because this team has just stumbled down the home stretch. Most recently, of course, the 49 to nothing shellacking at the hands of Texas. That's going to leave Oklahoma fans salty for quite some time, and they have ample reason to be concerned. What about the fighting Irish? You said South Bend wasn't hip enough to host a game in Las Vegas, but are you back on the Notre Dame bandwagon? They started 0-2, now 3-2. How I mean, look, you? their season was over before it even started. That said, They've salvaged a little bit. I'll go with the three. We're, we're somewhere in the middle here. Look, I think this is a Notre Dame team that has two really tough games remaining on the schedule in Clemson and one of your favorites, Calvin, mm. USC. If they right lose both of those games, you're looking at a four-loss year for the Irish. That's double what they've had in any of the previous five seasons. So reason for concern, yeah, but you also have to take it with a little bit of positive that they didn't take those first two losses and let it stumble from there. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think I'm at a zero for Notre Dame. I'm starting the hashtag really? rank the Irish oh campaign. You go on the road, you beat the North Carolina Tar Heels, NBYU in a neutral site. Game one at the shoe against Ohio State. Wash, not beating that team. And then it was a little bit of a trap game against the Thundering Herd and Marshall. I think Notre Dame has found their footing, and I'm not concerned about them at all going forward because they got big number 87 to throw to. Well, next time we do this, I've got to slap a baseball helmet on my I know. Head right You're there. looking handsome. We, we've look... got to dip into the archive. We've got it somewhere. We can, we can find those. Well, we our can... time is running low here on No Pulp, but we're not done yet. When we come back, it's our No Pulp Game of the Week. And our final words, you don't want to move anyway, so why don't you just stick with us? Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Well, Thomas, you've got prediabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. 
big time. Wrapping up shop here on No Pulp, but sorry, bad news, you're not done with us quite yet. <laughs> Alongside Calvin Cristoforo, I'm Johnny Gadamowitz. Before we say goodnight, it's time to check out everyone's favorite segment on the show. It's time for the No Pulp Game of the Week. Oh, indeed, it is time for the No Pulp <laughs> Game of the Week. And Calvin, boy, do we have a game to dissect. We've been beating around the bush all show, but it's Alabama and it's Tennessee and SEC stakes are up for grabs. What are you looking for this weekend? I like Alabama by two if their quarterback, Bryce Young, doesn't play. I like him by 22 if Bryce Young does play. I just think Alabama is the much more talented team. Tennessee's been playing well, right? Don't get me wrong, but I don't think they're ready for the big boys just yet. I don't like to agree with you too much, but I think this is an instance where I have to agree with you. Not for nothing. I mean, Tennessee, they haven't really shown me a whole I, I know on paper it's very, very solid, but who have they played? Florida, Pitt. I think at some point this is a Vols team that is bound to come back down to earth. But again, it all rides on the shoulders of the Heisman winner, Bryce Young. If he's on the field, we're on the same page. This game's not even a game. If he's not on the field, then chaos could ensue in the SEC. So, we're speaking of the SEC, but now let's shift gears here because no conference is going to be more fun to watch down the home stretch than the Big 12. Think about how the conference came into the year. Realignment looming large, a wide open conference with maybe some potential for a surprise team or two, and so far it's pretty much lived up to that expectation. This past weekend was Big 12 football in display on full force. Kansas State defeated Iowa State 10-9. TCU knocked off Kansas in a must-see matchup. Texas dominated Oklahoma. You had Oklahoma State rallying to beat Texas Tech. All told, Oklahoma and Iowa sit at the bottom of the standings at a combined 0-6 in the conference. And at the top, K-State, Oklahoma State, TCU, a combined 7-0. And as much as the Cowboys might be the front runners, this conference is totally up for grabs. Enjoy the Big 12 chaos down the stretch. We don't know if a team is going to get into the college football playoff from that conference. But for me, Johnny, there's a national travesty happening in college football, and that is down in Harrisonburg, Virginia. James Madison University, home of the Dukes, is 5-0, ranked, and one win away from bowl eligibility. But yet, even if they do win their sixth game of the season, and heck, it might even come this Saturday against Georgia Southern, they won't be eligible to compete in the postseason because this is the first year entering the FBS after transitioning from the FCS. And I'm willing to put my Sunbelt hate behind me to stand up for this cause, for the Dukes. Let the boys play. This is the same silly rule that left Bellarmine out of, the, out of March Madness last season. They are good enough to play at the highest level, so let them compete on the biggest stages. Don't make them ride with the training wheels on, Johnny. Well, I know how you feel about the Sun Belt, Calvin, but I have to agree with you. That, that is a silly, Ridiculous. dumb rule if I've ever seen one. How about JMU dominating the FCS ranks? They make the transition over to the FBS, and hey, they're making headlines left and right. Well, I'm just happy they're out of the CAA and the FCS because when they come up to Orno to play the Black Bears, things get ugly a couple of times, so you may sit sitting pretty without James Madison, although they are off to a 1-4 start. JMU number 25 in the AP poll at the end of week six. We'll see if they continue to rise their way up the ranks as the season progresses. Whole lot of storylines to keep our eyes on this upcoming Saturday. That's going to do it for this edition of No Pulp alongside Calvin Cristoforo. I am Johnny Gadamowitz. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.